Alright. Hello, happy YouTubers. This is Marceline at Casio I'm working with Greg Steven. Hey guys, how's it going out there? Today we got a really good video for you, especially if you're into citrus. Mm -hmm. And citrus is big in the news right now because the citrus crops in Florida and California are getting hammered with the oolong bean virus, which is also known as the greening disease. And so what we want to do is talk a little bit about citrus care, prevention, and also what to do with your citrus in the wintertime if you're in a northern part of the country mm -hmm. and you can't leave them outside. So it's getting back, getting back to, the, uh, to the greening disease. This is a bad disease. It is bad. <laughs> how do you how do you cure this thing? There is no cure for that. But they, right now they're working on how to control the issue. But well, they've been working on this for a long time because if you notice, if you buy citrus plants, and if you sell citrus plants, you mm -hmm. cannot ship to Florida, California, Arizona, uh, New Mexico, and some other couple other states. So you can't ship to them because they're trying to control this hulong bean of being transferred around the country um, it's, it's really bad and it's caused by a little insect that mm -hmm. is called a ciliad mm -hmm. and what's do you, do you know the latin name for the ciliad <laughs> diaphorina citri diaphorina citri is the, is the uh, name of that insect mm -hmm. and it looks like looks like a little tiny moth a uh, little skinny mm -hmm. moth and it just hopped around it doesn't hurt the plant, but it carries the virus, the virus. inside of it. Mm -hmm. So when it sucks the sap mm -hmm. out of that citrus tree, it injects it with that virus, that hulong bean that came from yeah, so, China. Yeah. So mm. what happens is that the the insect will, you know, like in, damage the stem. Now in the plant, the responsible of transporting that fluid is the xylem and phloem. Now. Once it is what when the first, you know, with the, the proboscis, yes, a little, and then it interrupts the, the transportation of fluid by the fluid. So that's kind of like a mosquito when a mosquito bites you as a person. Mm -hmm. It first injects you with an anticoagulant and then it draws the blood out. So mm -hmm. it, it gives you something back in return, not just takes. And that's the same thing with this, uh, this little ciliated insect does. Mm -hmm. uh, how can you tell if your plant has been infected exactly. with the ciliad versus uh, some of the other yeah. the other diseases that citrus can get? It's really hard to the, identify sometimes. It is really hard because there is the greening. You, you think like it is something maybe magnesium or nitrogen. Iron, carbon, lacking iron. Lacking iron or any kind of nutrients. But What's the common one? common one that you can get out here it's a bacteria uh, uh, the, where it has little brown spots underneath the leaves that is greasy spot greasy spot that's yeah, the that most common greasy. one that's it's the most common and that so sometimes that looks is like treatable. that is treatable very treatable but the greening is not so the greening is not only identified by the leaves and sometimes you have this process you know it's if the vein is still there, but there is a circle. But even though you're looking at that and you think it might be, the only way you can confirm it is you have to send it into a laboratory to get you confirmation. You have to send. And don't, if you got that, don't guess because you know. But the pattern you can see, uh, like a abnormal pattern of the of the greening. But the chlorosis mm -hmm. and greening sometimes they look very similar. It is. Yeah. It is really. So what you've got to do is treat treat that plant as though it was magnesium, you're lacking magnesium, or you're lacking iron. Hit it with an antifungal on both sides. Antifungal Azatec is very good for antifungal as well as for all types of insects. Uh, if you want some of this, I'll put a link below. But you want to treat it for everything else, and then if your plant starts dropping its leaves, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Watch and see if it grows new leaves back. And the new leaves should be nice and dark and green if you have proper nitrogen and you've got all your other uh, fertilizers are kicking in. But if you have a bad disease, the new leaves are going to come in damaged right from the very get-go. It's going to have the uh, the greening disease in the new leaves as well as in the older leaves. Now, it happens like, uh, let's talk about the transition of the citrus because right now a lot of you guys, including us, moving our citrus oh from the garden yeah. to the greenhouse or inside your home. Now the transition, what what other uh, problems that you might experience with your citrus well, during the transition? We have, this is the we have our plants outside in the mm -hmm. springtime, like in May, we bring all of our citrus and we put them outside in our, in our garden. 
and they're getting 12 hours of sunlight every day. They're getting natural rainwater. Uh, we only have to water them. We get enough rain in Ohio that we don't really have to water them once in a while. If we get a, like a two-week drought, we'll hit them up real quick. But uh, when you bring them back inside, they're not getting that 12 hours of sunlight anymore. They're not getting all that nice oxygen and that nice breeze, that nice airflow going through them, mm -hmm. keeping them healthy. You put them in a the house, unless you have a fan, and I recommend if you have a, a small fan, put that fan in front of your plants and let that air, that's great for the plants. It helps them stay healthy. Mm -hmm. They need air just like you do. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't overwater them. That's the biggest mistake people put when they're in the house. They just want to keep water, water, water. You can, you can water your citrus plants so much that they will start to turn yellow That's and you're it. thinking it's it needs water so you want to give it more water no you're giving it too much water and you're causing root rot in the pot and if you ever want to take a look just tip your pot upside down over a bucket or something and look at those roots and see if they're nice and white or are mm -hmm. they turning all yellow and brown if they're yellow and brown not good um, dry them out and you might have to start over again so um, <clears throat> two things that you need to uh... two things two things <laughs> just be with me guys so two things you need to look for your citrus if there is uh, symptoms because that's what you said plants yeah. cannot tell you what's going on but they can show you and I'll tell you what their leaves. sometimes your plant looks really good on the outside mm -hmm. but when you look underneath the bottom you go, oh my god look at all these little white spots down here oh my god look at all these aphids all these all these mealy bugs and stuff you got to treat them because they will suck the life right out of your plant mm -hmm. and they look good when you stand looking down on the ground they're on the ground and you're standing up looking you don't see it those bugs are designed to hide from you they're okay. good little hiders so speaking of this <clears throat> uh, three weeks ago this uh, citrus was a little bit of stress and i noticed that the tip was yellowing and the leaves you can see the vein and I said, what's wrong with this citrus? I watered it, then, uh, so I give uh, one teaspoon of vinegar. Yeah. So if you guys... And a gallon of water. Yeah, vinegar is really easy and yeah, quick your fix. Citrus are so, acidic plants, just like your so roses and I watered this citrus two weeks ago with one teaspoon, uh, one tablespoon of vinegar in a gallon, in a gallon of, water. of water. Yeah, yeah so it, you, you do that then before you fertilize and see if yeah, if you don't if you don't get your pH right in your soil, mm -hmm. all the fertilizer in the world you put in there is just going to wash right off the bottom of the of the tub. Now, and you know what? That is a that makes makes the citrus uh, foliage so green. Yeah. Look at that because of the uh, worm casting you yeah, bought. Put the worm. We love worm casting. It's mm -hmm. like black gold. It's it's great stuff. It's loaded with all kinds of nutrients. And do you have to fertilize in the winter only? And fertilize in the winter? I don't. I, I wouldn't recommend fertilizing <laughs> in the winter. Unless if there is a sign of it's kind of like a, or... it's a little bit of a dormant stage when you bring it in the house. You don't really need to fertilize, mm -hmm. but in the springtime when it's bringing it back outside, that's when you want to fertilize it. You want, of, to, yeah. you want to give it a lot of new growth. Something else I want to mention while we're talking about fertilizing and looking at nutrient deficiency in your citrus plants. Let's say you have a, a leaf here and it's looking really, really yellow and it's all veiny and stuff like that. And you fertilize it, you give it all the stuff. That leaf that you see is yellow, it's never going to turn green again. You might mm -hmm. as well just pinch it, cut it off. It will not turn back to green. So you're saying, I gave it everything and it's still yellow. Cut that yellow leaf off and you'll get a brand new leaf that'll come up from behind there. So mm -hmm. That's something that I learned a long time ago when growing citrus plants. Is it's uh, sometimes when you get some something funky going on sometimes fungus, you, she, uh, you actually you actually go on the plant and remove every single leaf on the whole plant and yeah. in about two weeks you see all these little baby new leaves <laughs> shooting out and then like a month later I said wow that's the like same how, plant it looks here's great. Marcelina shoot the kill yeah <laughs> oh she loves chopping and hacking plants man I, gonna, a, I said yeah. what happened to what happened to this plant it was beautiful she goes oh I propagated I took cuttings I said oh man <laughs> so it doesn't hurt you like uh, like for example if you if you're uh, citrus losing a lot of leaves or something not doing right you can trim your citrus trim it and then it will stimulate the plant now it might take too long to stimulate in the winter because they are in the yeah. dormant stage but in the spring it would come back and then it gives you that lush of, of what leaves. what do you um, 
What do you think is the best prophylactic you can take when you're putting your plants outside or you see that they're getting, uh, what's the best treatment you can give your plants to keep them from getting in that stage? What, what would, would the order would be? Fertilize, uh, antifungal, anti-insect, what would you recommend? Now, in general speaking, plants will be attacked by pests and disease if they, they are stressed. So the only thing that you can provide for that is to limit your stress level or keep it low. And I normally don't fertilize my plants unless I know the pH. Because if I, you know, it might, the plant might not be suffering from uh, nitrogen deficiency or might not be suffering from potassium or phosphorus or any kind of nutrients. Is there so, a fertilizer that you recommend that treats all that in one shot? Well, the NPK, that is the major right. fertilizer right. that you need to give But to you also plant. need the trace elements as well that's in there, like your iron and your magnesium and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's not in your NPK. Yeah. I, I, we, we like the the, the uh, sea foam. Seagro? Seagro, I mean. Seagro yeah, fertilizer is real good. And then mm -hmm. the citratone is another good one that's that's very good. And But those are all granular. Uh, Osmocote is another real good one. That's a time release fertilizer. Osmocote is great, a little bit pricey. I mean, a little little jar bottle like this is going to cost you about $12. But if you only got a couple plants, it's no big deal. And then we also like the uh, Captain Captain Jack's 2020 fertilizer, which that's is my a, favorite. It's it's water soluble, instant gratification. Your plants are hitting in the roots right away. Where some of your granulars, it has to dissolve over a period of time before your plant. But with the, the 20 20 20 fertilizer, the water soluble, it hits the plant really good, but you have to hit it like once every two weeks because it does wash out when you water the plant, the fertilizer is getting washed out. Yeah. Um, and then also, right now, like we said, the, the citrus industry is getting hammered right now. Mm -hmm. They're ripping their orange groves right out of the ground, and I've seen pictures, I'll try to find one and I'll post it up here in the thing for you to see what's going on in the orchard groves around the country. And they look like a like a war zone. Yeah, it's, that is the most yeah, uh, problem horrible. of all agricultural. Uh, if you're commercial. looking, if you're looking for Meyer lemon, <clears throat> calamansi, or the key lime, we have these in stock. We have them on our website, mm -hmm. and they're healthy. At cashyourgreen.com, <laughs> you can pick it up. And if you can see those plants, they are very, very green and very healthy. These mm -hmm. are grown from cuttings, not from seed. Which means this: when you grow a citrus plant. From a seed, it mm -hmm. looks pretty. I think is this one? Is this from seed? Uh, I can't find it. Mm -hmm. But it's going to take seven to ten years before you get your very first little blossom to make fruit. Mm -hmm. These are from our mother citrus plants that produce fruit for us all winter long. And your cutting is the exact same age as the mother plant, so you don't. There's no waiting time. I tell people, don't let this little thing bear fruit the first year because the weight of the plant is going to bend it down and it could stress the plant out too much. Right now at this age, you want all of your attention to be focused on root and mm -hmm. stem growth, giving it a yes. lot of nitrogen. Mm -hmm. You want to really nitrogize this plant. And then in about the third year, then you can start letting it fruit. By third year, it's going to be about this, about this big. It can yeah. start handling some fruit on there. That's really a cool thing. So grab some of these I have uh, I got a few of them so we're not we're not hurting for them right now I like Meyer lemon that's Meyer lemon and also Christian lime this is a Meyer lemon this is a smaller one this came from one of our smaller trees mm -hmm. I just sat out there yesterday and I peeled you it them. I ate it just like an orange it's sour but not as sour as the Eureka the Eureka yeah. is uh, very tart but this is a nice nice fruit very nice fruit we get some that are in the winter time out there in the ground. They're, they're this big, they're huge. Almost about half the size of a grapefruit. So how can you, uh, how can you provide a good care for your citrus so that you don't go, go into stress, like water stress, rock bound, and something well, like that, so. <laughs> one of the most, one of the easiest ways of stressing out your plant is moving it around a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, when a plant gets put in a position, it learns to acclimate itself to the amount of light, to the temperature, to the air, airflow, everything. But when you take that plant and you move it around, mm -hmm. it'll stress it out, and you'll start to see leaves starting to dropping. yellow and start dropping off. Yeah, until until it gets acclimated, and then it'll start growing some new leaves. So that and uprooting the plant, 
transplanting it to another pot. Uh, use your mycorrhizae, which is a beneficial fungus. I think I have this on hold. The, the mycorrhizae, you sprinkle some of that in the root system and it really helps uh, the transplant shock whenever you're, you're moving your citrus from one pot to another or even into the ground if you're living in the, in the uh, 7, 8, 9, 10 zones. So, what are you looking for, Ma? Ah, don't worry about it. I'll shoot a picture of it up on the screen. <laughs> I go through a lot of this mycorrhizae. Yeah, we do. Oh, you got some? Yeah. Yeah, well, you can't and, really uh, see it because the label is yeah. pretty well worn off. She, she carries this thing in her back pocket. It every really she helps the uh, transplant it's a, it's shop. A powder. It's a powder granule. Mm -hmm. But it's a beneficial bacteria that protects the roots against harmful bacteria. It is great also in it's also great in seedlings because there is a, a small amount of nitrogen feeding the roots of the plant mm -hmm. and the leaves. So mm -hmm. this is good. So other another thing is root bound. So that's why you have to make sure that the plant Yeah, if you have this if you have a plant like in a little plastic pot like this and it's not able to allow the roots to breathe, mm -hmm. it has little holes and balls more for drainage than it is for the roots though. And if you leave this thing in here too long, uh, that can also Great. cause some of the yellowing in your leaves and mm -hmm. your plant will look, look healthy because it's being stressed. And that's when your root bond is when your roots are wrapped around and around and around. And if you have it in an air breathing pot, uh, like this you, one, won't, this you is, won't get that. This is really healthy. Yeah. Look at the leaves because it is in the breathable pot. We have a video called, um, what is it called? <laughs> uh, we, uh, uh, milk crate, milk milk crate, crate containers. Container, yeah. And what it's made from using a milk crate and then we wrap it with weed guard mm -hmm. and tuck it in and then fill it up with your potting mix. And what happens with this is the roots will grow all the way to the edge of the weed guard and they stop because they can get air. Mm -hmm. They don't wrap around. You can leave this in this for a long time until you just want to change the soil because you know maybe your soil's got depleted and you mm -hmm. want to give it some new soil. Uh, that's the way. That's the way to go. This is a it's lime. A this that is, is a Persian. lime. I love Persian. This is a Persian lime. It's very healthy, and we have taken cuttings off of this little puppy all summer long, and it's still it's very woody, very healthy, mm -hmm. and very disease resistant. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you're getting into getting back to your citrus, your Eurekas are probably the most disease prone of all your citrus plants. Your uh, calamansi and your limes are very, strong, very, very strong, strong, very strong. And the Meyer is somewhere in between there. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it can get, it can catch some things. Mostly greasy spot is the number one prevalent uh, mm -hmm. thing that you have to stay contained on. And like I said, if you spray it with an antifungal, top side and bottom side, it will last for as long as you keep it indoors. When you take it outside and it rains, it's going to wash it off to a certain extent because uh, it, it is it is an oil and it does stick on there for a pretty good while. But it also has some botanical soaps inside mm -hmm. of there, and the botanical soaps will allow it to immerse, emulsify and will wash off easier. Mm -hmm. So you have to treat it probably once a week. You can't just have a citrus plant or a rose plant and put it outside <laughs> and forget about it. There is no yeah. such thing as plant and forget. Mm -hmm. um, you you want to take care of your of your plants. Yeah, so. you you had to, and uh, that's what. So the first thing, the most important in any plants or any, you know, any citrus you grow in the garden, you have to make sure that you check you check the pH. And if the pH is not corrected, like if it is too high, then mm -hmm. your plant will yeah, suffer. The, the and this P is what happened. The pH, in, the pH this is, is what happened in Florida because of their soil. Yeah, the Florida if you, is, used to be it's reclaimed land. It used to be all underwater. Florida used to be underwater at one time. Mm -hmm. It's nothing but sand and crushed shell. A lot of calcium in there. Calcium is going to make calcium carbonate is what seashells are made out mm -hmm. of, and that's going to make the soil or the sand alkaline. They like the acid, so yeah. they have to constantly fertilize those fields, and mm -hmm. you got to do the same thing. Talking about pH, here's a good example for you. You have a Ferrari, okay, and you have to put gasoline in it. If you put regular gasoline in that car, it's going to nick, nick and ping and pop and crack. You've got to run high octane gasoline in there to get the best performance. pH is the same way with your plants. You've got to have that pH. You got to get yourself a pH meter, and you got to check it at least once a week, especially if you are using a water soluble fertilizer. Mm -hmm wet the soil, test the pH, look at it. If it's 
6.5, you're in this, the acidic range, fertilize it. If you're at 7.0 or higher, you got to give it a, a teaspoon or tablespoon of, of uh, vinegar and a gallon of water. Let it, the next day, you can fertilize it. Mm -hmm. But you can also buy a more a granular uh, soil pH, um, mm -hmm. what do they call soil that? Soil acidifier. And that'll do, that'll do it a longer, it's more expensive. Vinegar, vinegar is very cheap. You can buy a big gallon of vinegar in the store for about for two and a half dollars. Two dollars. <laughs> yeah, and you're good to go. Yeah, you just water along with your, you know, when you water your, your plants, just mix with vinegar. It's a quick fix. Yep. So I water this one with vinegar. And uh, look at that, it's so beautiful. This might be our last video outside this summer. This is a beautiful day. It's about 73, 74 degrees in October 23rd. Mm -hmm. I have this question about, um, and I did not get into it, about the leaves. Uh, I think one person asked me, like, my, what happened to my citrus? Did I fertilize too much? Because the, she said that the leaves, the tip becomes brown and dark. Well, there are so many dark things. Dark green or dark brown? Dark brown. Oh, not good. And, uh, Burnt. Burnt. Yeah, it is a burn. It's, nit it's it nitrogen a, burn. It's a fertilizer burn. Yeah. yeah. And uh, probably you too add much. too much fertilizer. If that happens, just heavily, next time you water the plant, heavily water Rinse it and flush it, it out of there. Flush it out. Yeah. You might lose a lot of, of other nutrients, That's but right. at least you're taking if care If you guys of are into citrus and you're into uh, uh, tropical plants, house plants, or just advanced gardening, Hit that subscribe button right there on the screen. Mm -hmm. Join, guys. Join our gardening family and we will keep you up. Mama, mm -hmm. here is an agricultural specialist. Her, her degree is in agriculture and my degree is in zoology and mm -hmm. engineering. So I do a lot of agriculture engineering. That's why we do the high uh, advanced gardening from aquaponics, aeroponics. Um, I'm glad I found you, huh? Yeah, you got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so. I think that's a wrap. All right. So this is for now, guys. Thank you for watching this video. And hopefully this information helped you. So that's it for today. We'll see you next time. A peace. peace.